Hi there and welcome back to Elements for Bloggers. I'm Jenny and in this lesson you'll learn how to open files into the editor. You'll also learn how to crop a photo with different proportions and to resize a photo for your blog. Let's get started. We're back here in the editor with a clean slate and we're ready to bring in some of your pictures. Now there are several different ways you can do this. There's going up to the top and clicking file and then open. But because I've shown you how to use the organizer to get everything organized and arranged for your blog, we're going to go through the organizer to pull the pictures in. So go to the top right hand and click the button that says organizer and it'll bring up the organizer. Surprise, surprise. In the organizer, pick whichever photo you'd like to work on. I'm going to pick this one in the top left of a train coming out of a train tunnel. So I'm going to right click on this picture and you'll get a menu of options that comes down. I'm going to go down until I see Edit with Photoshop Elements Editor and click on that. And it will bring back up the editor and here's your picture inside the editor. You'll notice I've got the project bin open right here. If I had opened multiple photos, you'd see them all lined up here across the bottom. But as I said, I like to work with lots of space for my pictures, so I'm going to double click the project bin and minimize that. Now before I do any editing to this photo at all, what I usually do is go ahead and save a new copy of this photo. That way I have the original in case I ever wanted to use it for something else. So I'm going to go up to the top and click File and Save As. And this way when we're doing our retouching or editing, we won't be touching the original file. That will stay intact. So I'm just going to rename this Save As Train bridge. I'm not going to change the folder it's located in because I want it to stay with the original file. And what format do I want it in? If you click on that you have a bunch of different options to choose from. I'm just going to keep it as a JPEG. There's an option here to include this new version in the Elements Organizer. I'm going to leave it checked because I just like to keep everything visually organized for me inside the organizer. Click Save and we'll get a dialog box pop up here that asks what kind of quality we want for our file. I want to keep this version the same size as the original file. I don't want any loss of quality at all. So I'm going to click up here and scroll this all the way to the top. 12 is the largest you can go and 0 is the smallest you can go. So I'm going to go ahead and move the slider to the far right and then click OK. And now at the top here, well, first you'll see that I misspelled train, um, but then you'll see that we're now working with the new file. This is no longer the original file that we had. Everything else looks the same, but you'll see that new file name here in this tab. So we're ready to get started cropping. Now I was working with the crop tool before the video started, but you'll probably start out with the move tool selected. It's a good idea, as I said in the last video, to get used to using shortcut keys because this is really going to save you a lot of time in your workflow. So I could go over here to the left hand side of the toolbar and choose my crop tool, which appears right here, or you'll see that the shortcut key for that is a C. So it doesn't have to be capital C, but um, I'm bringing my cursor back so you can see what happens here in the middle. Right now it's the move tool and that's why the cursor looks like that. But if I push the C key on my keyboard, you'll see that it now changes to the crop symbol. So now I have the cropping item selected. I'm going to draw your attention now to the very top up above where you have your photo to the options bar. This is where you have all the different options for whatever tool you currently have selected. So I get to choose what the aspect ratio is that I want for my picture. You can choose no restriction at all and if it's on no restriction then when you click and drag to crop, it will let you size that freely. You can make it any shape you want to. And so that's really good if you just want to eyeball it and click. I'm going to press escape to get out of this crop because I want to choose a different aspect ratio. Clicking back at the top, you can use the photo ratio which will keep the cropping in the exact same orientation as the original photo that you have. If, I, if you want to do prints, you might want to have a 4 by 6 aspect ratio. A square, you would use a 5 by 5 or 5 by 7. These are all just in the US. These are our standard print sizes. So let's say I like the way the 5 by 7 orientation looks. 
Right now, my photo is laid out horizontally or in a landscape. But for my photo, I want to change it to a portrait orientation. I have this over here on the right hand side, which is the edge of the train tunnel. I have this lady. I'm sure she's a nice lady, but I don't want her head and arm in my photo. So I'm going to crop those out and I want to change this to a vertical picture. The way it is right now, if I click and drag, you'll see that it stays in that same aspect ratio where it's going to be seven inches wide and five inches tall. I want it to be the reverse. So at the top, it has where you can choose whether you want seven inches or five inches as the width or the height. And I'm just going to swap those by clicking that button in the middle. And you'll see that the bounding box that I have here now has the proper aspect ratio and the proper orientation like I wanted them. So now all I have to do is you can click at one of the corners and hold down. And when you drag it in or out, it will resize this with the same aspect ratio. Now you may notice that the inside of my box here is divided into thirds. And this is something that newer versions of Photoshop Elements have. I don't think they have it before nine. Um, I may be wrong on that. But if you see this, it's giving me these guidelines to help me in laying out this photo so that I can choose what the most interesting parts of the photo are if I want to follow the rule of thirds and line those up in these areas. So if you don't have these lines on the inside, don't worry, the cropping tool is going to do the same thing for you. So I'm going to get this arranged just like I want it, bring this out to the outside edges of my photo. And you can also, you can click in the middle of this and actually move that around once you have the, the orientation and size like you want. Or you can, if you want to get fine tune moving, you can use your arrow key. So I'm hitting my left arrow key here and you'll see that it's going over in smaller increments. And I'm going to go up a little bit. And to commit that change, I can either press enter or I can go down to the bottom and get my little check mark here. And when I click that, I now have my cropped image. Now, let's say that I did not want to take this cropped image. If I say, oh, this is not how I wanted it, I messed up. Well, one of the most powerful features of Photoshop Elements is that you can see the last several things that you did to the photo laid out for you over here in the history panel. So if I go up here, I'll see that this is after a crop has been made. But if I don't want to commit that crop, if I want to go back, yes, you can use the Command Z on your keyboard, and that's the shortcut for undo. But you can also go up here to the history panel and click on the previous state. And the more things you do to a photo, you're going to see this list grow up to probably around 30 or 40, depending on what the preferences are set to on your elements program. But you'll see all the previous things that you've done with a photo over here. So you can click on a previous state and it will revert back to a previous state of your photo. For now, I'm just going to click back on the crop because I actually do like it this way. And now I'm ready to use it for my blog. But wait, this is actually a huge picture. Remember, we just took it straight off our camera, put it on the computer, organized it with the organizer and brought it in. So it, this image is still the original size that I had from my camera. If you look down at the bottom left, you'll see what percentage you're looking at with your view here. This is only 21% of the actual size. And if you click on this, you can click, either click and drag and then set it to 100%. And then click enter and this is the actual size. I'm going to use another little shortcut tool here so I can show you how to pan around this picture. If you hold down the space bar, now watch what happens to my cursor here. I'm holding down the space bar and this switches over to the hand tool really quick. You can also get to that up here right beneath the move tool but it's a lot faster to just use this shortcut hold down the space bar and it will give you a hand so you can click to grab your photo and then when you're moving around your photo you can just drag as many times you want and it's going to give you the whole entire image. So obviously this is way too big to put on my blog. 